Morning, family. Friday morning. And I know you're thanking God, not just because um, it's Friday, but we're thanking God because we have another opportunity to live for him. We have been focusing on and doing our devotionals from the thought that we are disciples with a mission. Um, and all week we've been housing uh, our, our study from two primary points. Number one, that we are made with intention um, and purpose and that we live with intensity. That's, that's our passion. And we're, we're doing that because we wanna be uh, followers of Christ that live and move just like he did. He was sent into this world um, and he was sent to accomplish a mission. And in like fashion, we've been focusing on how we ought to live with that reality that we're under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and that uh, there's a certain expectation he has for us and we need to rise to the occasion and accept responsibility over that. And in fact, that's the reason why God formed us. That's the reason why he fashioned us and fitted us into this world to accomplish what he wants us to accomplish. And we don't have a lot of time to get it done. We, we have um, an, a short window on this world, in this world, to do and live for God like he wants us to live for him. What I want to do today is I want to, I want to kind of capsule everything together, summarize it, and leave you with four primary things to, to chew on and, and recalibrate your thinking, to challenge you on, and to live for with him. First and foremost, I really want you to go back and take a look at all of those passages that we've looked at throughout the week. If you need to go and check the recording, you can do that. And uh, spend some time meditating on those. Spend some time allowing your heart to resonate uh, through those texts. One text in particular, Acts chapter 20, and verse number 24, and, and if you have the New Living Translation, look at it in there. I just believe that that um, rendering of the passage really does a great job sharing the intensity. And in that text, Luke records Paul saying that his life um, really means nothing unless he uses it to accomplish the mission that God uh, put him here for, to share the good news of Jesus Christ to the entire world. And, and that's, that statement grabs a hold of every believer, every disciple who wants to live for God, that we miss the whole point of living. We miss the whole point of existing if our, if our lives aren't aimed at living for the creator and living for our God. Everything he's gifted you with and everything that we have ought to be towards that end. So um, think Think today uh, like it's the fourth quarter. Think today like the uh, the clock is out, and we're gonna we're gonna frame this as our Friday uh, fourth quarter focus. All right, and we're doing that based on the week. One last thing too, if if you want a recording of the sermon, if you want the whole thing, email me and I will uh, send you a link, a a, um, a Dropbox link. So you're gonna get Dropbox, and um, you'll have the entire thing, the entire audio for you. My email address is preachlikeapollos at gmail.com. All right. And bringing all of this together, the first thing that we have to hold on to is you got to remember, first and foremost, you have to remember, I have to remember that I'm on assignment. We've got to maintain a mission mentality. Go back to those passages, Acts 20, verse 24, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. God created you. He saved you to send you. You and I are on a mission. We are living every day of our lives. We get up and we ought to be grinding and going for God with, with whatever your occupation is, whatever your agenda is, it ought to have the fingerprints of the kingdom all over it. There ought to be tangible evidence that everything you do is in fulfillment of your existence for God. Think also about Colossians chapter three, down towards the end, that you do your work, not for your boss, but you do your work because you're actually working for God. That'll help you with number two. Number one, remember you're on assignment, but number two then, ready yourself for service. You and I have to practice growing our gifts. We grow our gifts by giving our gifts away for the glory of God. Did you hear that?
Your giftedness will be enhanced. Your giftedness will be bolstered. Your giftedness will flourish when you are turning your gifts right back over to God. And when you turn them over to God, God gets glory. And you then realize the real reason that you're here. Spend some time when you get a chance and look at Romans chapter 12. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And then also look at Ephesians chapter 4. God has given you the gifts that he's given you because that's how he's called you. And, and he expects you, he expects you and I to turn those gifts over for his kingdom and for his glory. So ready yourself for service for the king. But then number three, respond in faith to every opportunity that God gives you. I'm learning and I'm, I'm, I'm really, really trying to establish myself to be a faithful and tenacious steward of every opportunity God gives me. I want to have a step into it mentality. I want to, I want to get in and, and do the best I can with this opportunity. I'm not, I'm, I'm, it's not, it's not seize the day. It sees the moment. I want everything that God opens the door, every door he opens. I want to step in and do it. And the reason why is because I've, I've been challenged. There's a teacher that, that made the, um, made the analogy that if, um, if an individual, the average individual lives to be 82 years old, then that person um, actually has about 29,930 days to live. Um, and if you think about it, wherever you are in your age bracket, if you're 50 years old, uh, then you have used up 18,250 of your days, which means that you have 11,680 uh, days left. Now, if you're not tracking with me, you started out with 29,000, you got 11,000 left. You don't have a lot of time. That's if you're 50 years old, but then drop it on down, drop it down to about 35. If you're 35, you've used up to 12,775 of your days out of the 29,000, which means you only got about 17,000 plus left. You don't have a lot of days. The clock is, is ticking. Can't you hear it? Every day you ought to have a fourth quarter kind of mentality. You don't have forever on this side. You don't have forever on this earth. Why in the world would you waste time? Why would you not seize every opportunity? Why lay around, sit around uh, and, and do nothing with your time? Why purpose to do nothing? No, there's a difference between rest and, 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 and frivolousness. There's a difference between making sure that you have the energy to do what you're actually living for. Let's not be wasteful. Be a tenacious steward. I want to respond in faith to every opportunity. And I want to do it as I reflect on, number four, reflect on the power of God to use me like he's used so many people before. Here's the thing about God. God wants to use you and God can use you. But your faithful obedience, your faithfulness and your obedience um, to act on what God has put in front of you will determine whether or not he will use you. Did you catch that? It's not that he doesn't want to, and it's not that he can't. He's waiting on you to faithfully step into an obedient activity so that he will use you. And when you do, you kind of have a, a, a thought process that says, I got one shot. I got one shot to do this for God. There's a street poet that says you got one shot to rock. You know who that is. But we got one shot to live for God. You got one shot. Like, like, like Philip, he had one opportunity to run up on a chariot and, and speak and share the good news uh, with an Ethiopian eunuch. Like Elisha, he had one opportunity to be faithful and live and listen to uh, uh, Elijah where he waited to receive uh, the mantle. Like like um, like Jesus with Zacchaeus, one opportunity to, to call him out of that tree. Peter, one opportunity on Pentecost or later or earlier, rather, Peter, one opportunity to walk on water. There's so many occasions just like that in scripture. You got one opportunity to shine for God. The book of Proverbs in the Good News Translation says in verse number four, the A clause of that verse, everything the Lord has made has its destiny. You do too. God has a destiny for you, and, and he really wants you to step into it. 
And the question is going to be, very frankly, whether or not you're going to live on that, on that mentality that you have a mission as a follower of Christ. You have a mission that God wants you to accomplish. It's Friday. You, you got to have a fourth quarter kind of focus. You're living for God. I thank God for today. And I'm going to pray for you. I want you to pray for me. But let's seize every opportunity. Let us remember. Let's be ready. Let's respond and let's reflect. Do that today. Get God glory. Make everything that he put in front of you, make it count. You only have a short amount of time. God bless you. I pray that your day is awesome.